Welcome. In this video, we go into our season three hunt of Wild Ascent. So at the end of our previous encampment phase, we scouted and got into Jessica's tier. So all creatures are going to have plus one advance prior to attacking, getting a level two river guardian and then three level one creatures. So our guardian here, 21 health, may only be damaged by adjacent attackers. And also, at the beginning of Season 3, we're going to add Threat 2 Scout cards to our stack. And at the end of Season 3, we are going to get one gold. So we'll take our Level 1 and Level 2 Scout cards and shuffle those together for our next scouting in the encampment phase. And we're going to get our Level 1 Monsters, give this a shuffle, and see what our other three creatures will be for this hunt. So in addition to our River Guardian, we are going to get the Wisp. So on defense, minus three to all incoming damage from non-adjacent attackers. So we want to get adjacent to him and the River Guardian. Then our second is a Unicorn. Global effect, all allied creatures have minus one base damage, but plus two attack dice. And the Blessing of the Ancients, when slain, heal all other allied creatures to full health. So we probably either want to take him on first or last. And lastly, the Exalted Eff Effigy is back. On activation, he'll sell for two. So we go ahead and place their health. The Wisp is going to be a 10. Unicorn at 23. And the Effigy at 14. We've got our creature one, two, three, and four. And then our miniatures for those. And we'll take all their instinct cards and give that a shuffle. And with all those shuffled together, we'll set these to the side. And I just have my priestess here because so at the beginning of an encounter, one seeker may make a free activation. So I just want to remember we get that going off. So then to finish our encounter setup, we're going to get a random card. So give these a shuffle. And we're going for one. We have a lost seeker. So this would be our setup. And so we'll go ahead and draw for our Obstacles, starting from the top and working our way down like so. So first off, got a six, which is a pit. So any seeker or creature who enters a pit field must end their activation immediately, forfeiting any unused speed and actions. They must also spend their entire next activation to move to an adjacent field. Uh, the others are partial cover, you get plus one to our defense, Neither can end their movement on the cover, but they may move over it at a cost of three. Full cover, seekers and creatures may not end their movement on it or move it over it. Any attack that draws line of sight through it, full cover cannot be made. Even if the miniature is adjacent to the full cover, no aiming around corners. Uh, Thornbrush, identical to that, except if something gets knocked back into it, they're assigned two damage and bleed. So we'll see what the rest are. Next, we're getting some partial cover, which will be there. And these will get shuffled back in. And more partial cover right here. Then we're getting some full cover popping up there. And lastly, some more full cover. And that will be there. Then we'll set up our creatures and their facing and our seekers. So he will be next to the partial cover looking up. The wisp is here looking this direction. Unicorn is over here looking this direction upstream. And the effigy is there looking down. We are going to make Drusus a Lost Seeker and put him down here. Zaxos, we will start over here, along with Cabolt. And then Fanny, looking this direction. So I think that has us set up there. 
So finally, Drusus is always going to give his flanking ability to Zaxos. So on that, hold this up here without all the tokens not falling off. At the beginning of the encounter, apply flanking to a Seeker. That Seeker has plus four base damage against creatures adjacent to Drusus. Unfortunately, we needed someone lost. And he also gets to be focused. At the beginning of the encounter, apply focus to a creature. Drusus has plus one base damage and minus one defense against that creature. We're going to choose the exhausted effigy there. And of course, with this one, the creatures do get to go first, except we have the priestess, so we get a free activation. So that's not going to count against our first four. So we're going to have Zaxos go ahead and go for the free, thanks to the priestess. Movement of three, so one, two, three. Attack, base damage of three, three dice. I'm sorry, I'm on Drusus, wrong one. Base damage of four and two dice, except our base damage is plus one and we're minus one defense against him. So base damage of five and two dice. Actually, for better positioning, I am gonna move one, two. Still, everything else works the same there. This just gets us adjacent to the cover. Better play on my part. So five, six, seven damage and his defense. Bring the cards down so I can read them a little better. He's got a base of zero. So down to seven health. All right, so the creatures activate, starting with the Wisp. And she's targeting all allies. She's not gonna move. Heal for three for each creature heal to full HP. Sign two damage to the enemy with the lowest HP. So it's only going to heal one creature. Everyone else is already at full. So one, two, three. And the way I'm interpreting this, for each creature healed, so the ones already at full were not healed, assign two damage, so nothing's going to happen with the rest of that. Then we're going to go with Drusus. Since the other was a free activation, he's just going to move up one and turn sideways. Could keep going to go into his back, but that leaves our back wide open for this unicorn to stab us in the back. But you know what? I think that's going to be a risk we want to take. So we started there, move one, two, three. He's in our frontal arc, hitting in the back. So it's going to be a base of five, six, seven, plus the dice. Eight damage, taking him down to two. So that healing saved his life. Creatures, River Guardian, enemy with the lowest magical defense, which is always going to be Fanny. Uh, careful, swift advance. So I want to get into a range of three. So it's careful and swift. One, two, three, within a range of three. So it's doing three base damage since it's level two and three attack dice. But because of the unicorn, minus one base damage and plus two attack dice. I'm gonna always forget that, so I'm gonna move that over. So we're getting five dice and two base damage. Specials aren't gonna do anything. With her, she's got her ability, sidestep on defense, roll an attack dice. If it's a special ignore it, she gets to roll two dice. So that's our attack going in. Fanny's defense. She's taking it. So five damage coming at her. Our magical defense is zero. So down to 20. All right, we're going to activate Fanny. She's got a movement of five. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. So she's adjacent to this and attacking him in the back. So it's a base six damage plus a die. Actually seven, because Drusus gives everyone plus one base damage. So he is out. So one creature down. Then we get the Wisp. Self, halt, heal self for eight, nine, or 10. If at full HP after healing, draw another instinct card while well, it's at full health. 
So the River Guardian, most adjacent enemies. Now those are the only two that are adjacent. Swift Advance 5 with a plus one there. That's going to get a range of one, zero base damage, which isn't going to go to negative one. And then it's going to have seven attack dice. Attack and knock back all adjacent enemies. So he's just going to go to this area. Seven dice. Oops, that was a blank. So three damage. His magical defensive one, so he'll be taking two. And knocked back. Sorry, I guess that was four. He's taking three. Then he's got a magical defense of three, so ends up taking one. Of course, when the other creature was slain, he has an ability where he heals five, but he was already at max health. And then gets knocked back. Then we're going to use Zaxos. For one, two, and three. It's going to have plus one defense here, attacking the Wisp straight on. It's going to have a base damage of three, four, and rolling three dice. So six damage on a defense of zero. And it's adjacent. So down to four health. Then our next creature is the Wisp. Targeting the enemy with the lowest magical defense. Careful flying advance with a range of four. So that's here. It's basically got five movements. So one, two, three, four, five. Shooting in her back. She still has plus one defense for being adjacent there. It's going to be a base damage of three because of the unicorn and rolling four attack dice. We'll need special heal all creatures for one. So four dice. Getting one special. Healing herself for one. Use her ability. So no damage. We sidestepped it. So Kuralt is our only one left. Movement of three. So one, two, three. Frontal arc here in the back. Base damage is going to be three magical with four dice. It's going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage. Creatures down. Next, the effigy, which is out. So we get a free turn. Like I said, this is my first time going through a scenario. I am doing the easy or basic campaign. There is a harder difficulty. So in the hard mode, whenever you draw a creature that's been defeated, you keep going until you find one that keeps going. Also capturing, you take two damage instead of one, but I don't know how this scales as we go. So we're just keeping on as is. And since an enemy was defeated, he heals five, but maxes out at 20. And we will clear. And I think now we're gonna make the unicorn our target. So what he's going to do, he likes getting that plus one defense. So he's just gonna move one here, turn around. Wait, that's Drusus, Never mind. Not going with him yet. So we want Zaxos. So one, two, no. One, two, um. And I guess all he's gonna to get to do is go one, two. And attack in here with a base damage of four and three dice. It's going to fatigue the creature, which gives him less movement. So six damage, defense of one, two, so four damage. Going down to 19. Oh, and he does have plus four base damage because he's flanking. Uh, at the beginning of the encounter phase, Seeker has 
plus four base damage against creatures adjacent to Drusus. So even though he's not facing him, he's adjacent. So that's going to be another four damage added on to that. So down to 15. Then the Wisp skips his turn back to us. We're going to go with Drusus, who is going to go movement one and step over. So still in the frontal arc. Getting two dice with his base four. So five damage minus the two, so three damage down to 12. Fortunately, I think we need it down to 11 before we can start capturing. But with Zaxos's ability, if an adjacent enemy in his frontal arc is attacked, he may make a four attack dice against that. So he's got one plus one base damage because of his ability. And yeah, he does some more damage there. So five damage minus the two. So three more down to nine. And there is two fatigues, but I do not believe they stack. So he's already got one on him. Then the effigy. So we get another free turn. And I think it's time we start capturing this guy. So Fanny will start that. Movement of one, two, three. And I've seen this play different ways, and depending on where you're reading in the rule book, sometimes you take a damage, sometimes you don't. I'm continuing, I'm gonna stay steady throughout this campaign and go when you start the grapple, you do not take the damage um, in the rule book. So up here it does state you assign a damage to the seeker. Well, at the end of the seeker's next activation, assign a damage, not the end of this activation. But down here it does imply. She moves to the Jason Griffin and begins capturing. She's assigned a damage and adds another capture token to the card. So not sure which way to go. A lot of times during playtesting, rules change, and I guess the rulebook just wasn't updated. So for the easy mode, I'll continue this path. So we need two on the captured side there. So that was her activation. Then the River Guardian's going to go. Most adjacent enemies. Oh, goodness, that's going to hurt. Uh, swift advance of five. So it can move diagonally, so it's easily going to make it. Uh, nine attack dice. Uh-oh. So changing direction for one, two, three, four, and five. Still had another plus one there. This is going to hurt. Nine attack dice. So here's eight of them. Oh, good grief. All right, plus one more. Yep, nine hits on everyone in their back. 11 damage on all of them. So Zaxos, Zaxos let's see. This is magical. It's going to have one, two, so taking nine damage. Down to 17. Drusus is going to subtract two, taking nine, down to 21. See if Fanny gets lucky. Nope, she did not sidestep. And she's adjacent to two plus one defenses. So taking nine also, down to 11. Well, that hurt. So Kuralt is going to go, he's got a movement of three, have to be adjacent to hurt that guy. So he's just going to start making his way down this way. One, two, three. Resetting. Wisp goes, we get a free turn. Drusus is going to start the capturing process. You know what? We will go ahead and have him attack here. So Zaxos is getting the flanking bonus. So his base damage is going to be eight plus three dice. And some fatigue. So 11 damage. 
Defense of one, two, so taking nine. Down to 12. Then we're gonna get the unicorn going, which is gonna do a damage to Fanny. That's the only one capturing at the moment. And we have Kralt go. One, two, three. Then the unicorn, damage to Fanny. Fanny will go flipping this over to the captured side, taking a damage. Unicorn goes, doing a damage to Fanny. Drusus starts a capturing process. Exhausted Effigy, we get a free turn. This is gonna reset. And we're gonna start with Drusus flipping his over. So we've got the unicorn captured. All right, next, unicorn out of action. We're gonna have Fanny go. So one, two, Turn around for three, she's got a range. Of, uh, he can't take damage unless you're adjacent. In that case, she's just turning around. And taking a swing, base damage is gonna be five plus one dice. So six damage with his defense of one plus one, so taking four down to eight. River Guardian goes, enemy with the lowest magical defense, which is of course her. Careful, swift advance, magical attack, wants to get three away from her. And with the unicorn gone, we're back to whatever's on the card. So all to tell, together he's got seven movements, minus two, so five. So one, two, three, Four, five is as far, yeah, that's as far as away. He can't really get away from everybody, but he does want to get away from those. So he'll far away as he can from her. Attacking with magical attack of three base damage and three attack dice. See if she can sidestep. She doesn't. She gets Two defense, so she ends up taking two damage. And for our turn, he is gonna start the capturing process. So he'll turn around for one, two, and three, and start. Nothing happens. Zaxos, movement of three, one, two, three. All done here. River Guardian. So damage to him. And we'll activate her going into hide phase. Effigy, we're good. We're gonna have Drusus go. So one, two, three. Unicorn goes. Geralt will go, capturing. And now we go through and get the River Guardians out, but it doesn't matter because every turn he's gonna be doing damage to whoever's capturing. So it's his turn, so Kroll takes the damage. Back to us. Zaxos goes for one. Start the process and we can clear. Guardian goes, get the unicorn off. He's hitting him and him, both of them for one. Then we get to go. We'll have Fanny take her activation. We have Zaxos go, flipping this over, taking a the damage. Then he goes, doing a damage to both of these. 
Geralt will go, takes a damage for maintaining. They both take a damage from him. Drusus will go, moving up, starting the process. We reset. Guardian goes, damage, damage, damage. Then we can go Drusus, getting our third one on here, getting him captured. So we've got two deceased and that is going to get us two essence tokens, which we can take back and add to our resources in the encampment phase. So go ahead and clear the board off here. All right, we fly back to our encampment, meet at the campfire, add our two new essence. So that's going to still have an eyeball, two feathers, horn, a heart. We've got three essence and three blood now. This is going to change into a level two token and a level one. So we can keep one over here and one there. Guess we're gonna move these off too. Priestess. All right, so our barracks is level two. So heal all seekers for six after each encounter phase. So going up to 26, up to 19, up to 18, and up to 11. All our seekers are gonna get their five actions. And unfortunately, he cannot go to the Silver Stream. But he's almost at full health, so he will. Along with Zaxos. And that's going to cost three actions each, so they're down to two. And that's going to allow us to sell our creatures. Now the Veterinarian allows us to sell Threat 2 and 3 creatures for one additional gold. So normally this guy gets us 2 gold, but he's going to get us 3 thanks to him. And this is going to get us 1, so we're going to end up with 4 gold. Which is pretty nice. Then we're going to take all our worker cards, give them a shuffle, so we could potentially hire 2. We're going to look at 3 of these. We can hire up to 2 of them, and with our barracks... Up to level two, we can actually have four. So if we get some good ones here, we might just go ahead and do that. So one, two, three. Our options are a monster hunter. So seekers may begin capturing creatures at half their health plus five. That's kind of cool, An engineer. Now we are going to have to get that building for this one. Choose a building at the beginning of each encampment phase. That building has plus one level until the end of the encampment phase. That's pretty sweet. And the speaker. When a seeker is down, change their current health to five and make a free activation. They are not down. This may only occur once per encounter. I like that, especially since we took a lot of damage. Of course, that one hit where he did 11 damage to three of us did not go well. And one more item, the Monster Hunter, allows us the chance to purchase a Seeker's Manual, which we do have the ingredients to do that. Uh, apply research to a creature at the beginning of the encounter. That creature's attacks have minus one, two, or three damage. That seems pretty good. So what we're gonna do is spend a gold to hire her. Spend two gold to take that to level two. And then spend one gold to take that to level one. And we'll take our market cards and see what three items we have access to. Two, three. So two horns we don't have, so probably not. Two hearts we don't have. All right, so we could potentially buy those if we had the resources, but we don't. All right, so that's gonna end it for them. So now with this at level two, so down here it shows heal a seeker for two health per action, maximum occupancy of two, three, or four seekers. So now we can spend or have three seekers go there. 
And of course, that also applies to speakers may spend an action to heal at the temple. The amount of healing depends on the building level. So we're going to heal for three instead of two. So these two guys, we're going to go over and spend an action to heal three. So one, two, three. And one, two, three. Then they'll both do the same thing. He maxes at 30. One, two, three. Then next action for him, he's gonna go over here, spend those resources to get the manual. So we will go ahead and attach that to Kuralt. So apply research to a creature at the beginning of an encounter to reduce their damage output. So we need a heart, an eyeball, and some blood. She's going to heal some more. So one, two, three. All right, now we can start thinking about some things. So we can get two more heals for some people, and then we need two people to go out to scout. Uh, we definitely want him to be one more healing. And Fanny also. So down to one. Down to one. One, two, three. And one, two, three. All right, so these two, spending two action to go scouting. That's going to end the encampment phase. So we're plus one for scouting, so we're going to be able to look at three cards which now has level one and level two cards in here. So one, two, three, our options. We've got two level twos and level one. So a path to the vein. Seekers may not apply status effects to creatures, not huge, an effigy and level two and three level one creatures. The Phoenix has on activation assign one damage to all seekers. We're gonna face three level two creatures. And the tiers again. But at level two, all creatures have plus two advance and three level two creatures. And you know what? I'm not feeling adventurous. We're going for the easy one. We're taking a level one card. Now, eventually, all the level one cards will come out. So we're getting the exhausted, exalted effigy at level two. So he'll be starting with 18 health on activation heals for three. Clairvoyance on defense, ignore bonus back damage attack. And three level one creatures. So give this a shuffle. Next on our list is going to be a Bog Skulker, 15 health. On defense, retaliate with physical attack, range one, three base damage, two attack dice. Redoubt may not receive more than four damage from a single attack. Ooh. All right. Then we're going to get the Demon Wretch, 15 health. Expel on activation, roll three attack dice. On each special, summon a demon spawn with one HP, three speed, and magical attack of range one and five attack dice. And lastly, in the next battle, can't have two of them. So the River Guardian's back at a lower level. 18 health may only be damaged by adjacent attackers. And at the end of season three, we get a gold. And next, season four. So as always, hope you enjoyed this playthrough. So please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.